Greetings, and welcome back to room 303 in our talks with Walt as we are calling our readings through the deathbed edition of Walt Whitman's Leaves of Grass. We are in the Calamus section, and we're going to now pick up a little poem called Among the Multitude. Notice, by the way, that the first line of this poem is not among the multitude, but rather among the men and women the multitude. So there's a few times in Calamus where he plays that game of changing. Now, this poem is going to in some ways be an echo of the inscriptions poem that we worked with. Obviously, the assumption is that you've seen our stuff at uh, uh, learnstrong.net down the left-hand side, Talks with Walt. Hey, do you remember this little poem when I read the book? When I read the book, the biography famous, and is this then, said I, what the author calls a man's life, and so will someone, when I am dead and gone, write my life? As if any man really knew all of my life. Why, even I myself often think now, uh, know little or nothing of my real life, only a few hints a few diffused, faint clues and indirections I seek for my own use to trace out here. We're going to play this game here in this poem as well. Now my assumption is you've been with us all the way from that inscription poem that I just worked with um, all the way up and including to a western uh, boy and fast anchored eternal O love, the, the two poems that will precede this one. Uh, Norton's giving us background information will tell us that this Calamus number 41 poem is but slightly revised from its original and the 1860 text. It took its present title in 1867. Again, the, the echo in line six in the phrase, faint clues and indirections, will take us uh, back to the uh, 1867 inscription poem that I just read to you when I read the book, which is why I shared it with you. Let's go ahead now and read the poem and enjoy it. And as we, uh, <clears throat> and, and as we do this, I want you to remember that Whitman was a great lover of the King James Version of the Bible, the 1611 King James Version of the Bible. And you'll remember in Matthew uh, chapter 10, verse 37, Christ is purported to, this, to have said, He that loves mother or father more than me is not worthy of me. Son or daughter is not worthy of me. There is a reading of this poem that will, in fact, see it as blasphemous, uh, especially for readers of Whitman's day. I'll ask you to maybe kind of share some of the potentialities of that among the multitude. Among the men and women, the multitude, I perceive one picking me out by secret and divine signs, acknowledging none else, not parent, wife, husband, brother, child, any nearer than I am. Some are baffled, but that one is not. That one knows me. Ah, oh, lover, and perfect equal. I meant that you should discover me so by fate, in directions. And I, when I meet you, mean to discover you by the like in you. It's an amazing little poem. Of course, it fits rather nicely into the Calamus section and the whole idea of adhesiveness and the, the love uh, and the friendship that is a part of all of the poems of Calamus. Notice we'll begin, first of all, with that idea. In all of the multitude, again, going from the large down to the small, among the men and the women, the multitude, I perceive. I told you guys, he loves this word, perceive. One, picking me out by. Secret and divine signs obviously takes us back to many of the references in Calamus and earlier poems of the secret of Whitman's life, that which is not yet acknowledged. Speaking of acknowledged, that's the next word. Acknowledging none else. Not, and then notice the list here of five. Again, taking us to the Matthew 10, 37 passage I was referencing. Not parent, wife, husband, brother, child, any nearer than I am. Of course, this I am, we've referenced it before, the echoes of Exodus 3, right? Verse 14, I am that I am, and all of that, right? Some are baffled. Uh, you'll remember this use of the word uh, baffled when we get to Song of the Open Road, passage 13. But that one is not that one knows me. This idea, again, the epistemological uh, and the ontological identification, there's something for Whitman about being accepted as he is at, to be known. It's, it's obviously unique, right? And then he uses this word, ah, which makes us think immediately of Matthew Arnold's Dover Beach, ah, love, let us be true to one another. Ah, lover and perfect equal. I, I told you, he likes this word perfect, complete, and he likes this word equal, of or related to, the demo to, to democracy, right? I mean that you should discover me again. Discovery is all about leaves of grass, right? By faint indirections. You'll remember this 
word faint in the when I read the book from pay, uh, um, from from earlier in inscriptions, right? And I, when I meet you, right? In other words, sooner or later we're going to meet. Now, you can be talking literally, or many readers have used this to say, Whitman knew he was going to be read by you, by you guys. Isn't that fascinating to think? He somehow knew that you guys were going to be reading his stuff long, long after he passed. And when I meet you, mean to discover you by the like in you. Now, this word discover that's used twice takes us back to Song of Myself, Passage 38. I discover myself on the verge of of a usual mistake that he loves that use idea of the word discovery. Um, well, where are we going to go here in terms of a message in 2A? It's not always easy, right, to understand the artist. And understanding by even one person is enough for the true artist. And this is the point. In other words, as you're reading these poems, can you come to any serious acknowledgement of Whitman and understand him at all? If you can, Whitman is pleased, right? At 2B, well, the echoes, especially that word faint, I love how Whitman does that, where he drops these kinds of echoes back in, right? At 3A, of course, as I said, when I read uh, the book, that, that, that word faint um, and the way that it works, okay? And finally, at 3B, who do you, as you say, so you can hope, hope to own a poem like this, who do you hope can someday understand you or discover you? I hope that our study of Whitman is leading you to discover him and in the process discovering yourself and others, obviously. Thank you.